Thank you very much. Um, my name is John Gore. Uh, I wear a couple different hats relevant to this presentation. Uh, I'm also a urologist uh, at the University of Washington. Um, I, uh, I work with uh, several of you in the audience on a program to develop resources for prostate cancer patients. Uh, but the presentation that I want to give today is more relevant to a hat I wear as a co-director of a, a regional program, a Washington State program, to try to improve the quality of the care that we deliver. So we've heard a lot about great treatments, great interventions that help men with prostate cancer, but it's insufficient if those treatments aren't getting to the right patient at the right time in their care. So that's what we're trying to look at today. So I want to talk about how we measure the quality of the care that we deliver, what we know about the quality of prostate cancer care in Washington State, and what we're actually doing about it on a day-to-day -day basis today. So how, how do we decide what is good care? Well, to date, the way that we've been doing that is by gathering a bunch of prostate cancer experts in a room and asking them, what do you think are the things that we should be doing for men with prostate cancer? It's based on expert opinion. And because of that, it's mostly related to what are called processes of care, things that we do in the clinic, in the operating room, in the radiation oncology clinic, in the office that are associated with, we think, better outcomes. And one of the problems that we have in measuring quality of care is that the outcomes that we are worried about, death from prostate cancer, they take a long, long time to mature. So as we think about how we measure quality, we focus more on what we do than what happens as a result. So as an example, these are some of the official quality indicators in prostate cancer care. So um, the use of hormone therapy along with radiation for men with high-risk prostate cancer. When we report the results of a prostatectomy, that we include the stage of the prostate cancer, the grade of the prostate cancer, and the margin status of the prostate cancer. And that when we see our patients after surgery, that we don't just ask them how they're doing from a continent standpoint, that we actually measure it with surveys that have been shown to be validated. Well, how is this care currently measured and distributed? The most common way uh, uh, known is through Medicare. So Medicare has a payer program called the Physician Quality Reporting System. And this is Medicare's way of trying to stratify the quality of care that Medicare patients are currently receiving. It's a voluntary reporting system where providers actually get a bonus payment right now, but this is a permanent initiative. And so in a couple years, it's actually going to be a penalty. So we as prostate cancer providers are all going to basically get a report card for the care that we deliver. Well, what does that report card include? These are the PQRS measures that are currently relevant to urology practice. And so some of these are things like do we give the right antibiotic before a patient has a surgical procedure? Do we try to prevent clots that men can get in their legs or in their pelvis before they undergo a pelvic cancer operation? And several of these are actually relevant to prostate cancer care. Do we get too many tests for men with low-risk prostate cancer? Are we, like that quality indicator I showed you a second ago, appropriately using hormone treatment for men with high-risk prostate cancer? And are men getting the most modern uh, radiation therapy techniques? These are sort of broad, um, broad quality indicators, and they may not discriminate what actually happens to the day-to-day -day prostate cancer patient. So, um, unfortunately, we are not looking at an exhausted list of prostate cancer uh, measures. We're looking at a very uh, abbreviated list that doesn't necessarily capture everything that goes into the care of a prostate cancer patient. This is certainly something that is on payers' radar. They want to understand which providers are providing the best care and figure out how to direct patients to those high-quality providers. So what do we know about prostate cancer care here in Washington State? Well, this is some data that we uh, published recently, uh, and Dr. Wright was part of this analysis as well as was Dr. Lin, where we looked at patients who got their prostates removed for prostate cancer only in Washington State. This is not uh, nationally representative data. This is just here in Washington State. And we were able to identify over 8,000 cases, but these big ticket items, things that are um, sort of profound outcomes, like death after surgery or major clotting events after surgery, 
They're very, very rare. The incidence of these occurring is all less than 1%. So in terms of looking at what's called claims data, billing data, like Medicare data, there may not be enough detail or enough granularity in this data to allow us to say that provider A is delivering high quality care and maybe provider B isn't so much. What else could we learn from this data? Well, we know that there's a relationship between how much you do and how good you are. It's like woodworking. So I haven't touched a saw in like 20 years. I would probably build a pretty horrendous lamp. But someone who's in that woodworking shop every day is going to build something beautiful. The more we do, the better we are at it. So you would expect that if we made a line for every hospital in Washington state, that the hospitals that did fewer surgeries would be above the number one, meaning they have a higher rate of bad events compared with what we would expect. And the hospitals on the right that do a lot more would be better at it. So they would be below that line one, which means that they have fewer events than we would expect. So when we look at a big ticket item like death after having your prostate removed, we don't see that. Because this is such a broad and rare outcome, we can't use this to discriminate the quality of care that men with prostate cancer uh, receive here in Washington State. What about if we look at length of stay after prostatectomy? This is one of those processes of care that we talked about, how care is delivered. Well, it's all over the map. We see low volume doctors and low volume hospitals that keep their patients in the hospital for quite a long time and high volume hospitals and high volume hospi uh, doctors that keep their patients in the hospital for a long time. Now, I'm not saying that length of stay is an important outcome, but what it shows us is that the care that we deliver as prostate cancer providers, it might be all over the map. And we think about variation in the care we deliver like heat in a mechanical system. So if your engine is putting out a lot of heat, that's a lot of waste. So if we look at the engine of prostate cancer care in Washington State, it looks like there might be a lot of heat. So, sorry about that. So what we know is that major events are rare after having your prostate removed for prostate cancer. There's little variation between hospitals for these major outcomes. And so we do think, though, when you look at some of these processes of care, there might be room for improvement. So what are we doing about it? Well, um, there's a great quote uh, from Jim Collins, who writes a lot about management, um, where he, he rails against the tyranny of the ore, that you can't have one without the other. You can't give a high-quality product at a low cost. What we want to adopt is what he calls the genius of the and, where we can give high quality care, but we can deliver it at a low cost. So through a prostate cancer quality collaborative, where we are actively accruing data and expanding the number of hospitals where we are measuring this care, we may define quality concerns and actually act on those concerns to improve the quality of care that men with prostate cancer are receiving. And that we can use clinical data from dedicated chart abstraction, which is much more detailed and much more granular than, say, from Medicare claims data, and combine that with quality of life outcomes to try to get a comprehensive picture of the surgical care that men are getting. In the future, we'd like to benchmark some of these things to try to actually affect quality improvement. We'd like to expand to other sites, definitely get better representation geographically of Washington State. We'd like to start including non-surgical patients. Surgical patients were the easiest place to start just from a, an administrative standpoint, but we want to measure radiation care, active surveillance care, sort of a comprehensive view of prostate cancer. And eventually layering other initiatives on top of this quality of care initiative so that we can do more with, with these patients that are enrolling uh, in our quality collaborative. Thank you very much.